This conference will now be recorded. So, yeah, so team, today uh, we are going to start our actual uh, kicks training. Today I explain topics, what are the topics we are going to cover, the duration and all. So, literally I did not start any uh, content yesterday, but we are starting from today. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> So CICS, what is CICS? Okay, so customer information control system. CICS stands customer information control system. We use CICS. We use CICS as okay. We use CICS to develop front-end screens, okay, we use CSS to develop the front-end screens, okay. Uh, example, <clears throat> okay, so example, uh, we web page, okay, web page. If you want to develop like a web page, login page, register page, uh, employee details, customer details, if you want to develop any such screens, screen or page, then we need a CICS. In mainframe technology, we use CICS. If you are graduated, uh, you know, from, you know, if you CSC graduate, then you might be knowing Java, in a Java, so HTML, CSS, we use to develop the front end screens. <coughs> Core Java, we use to write the program uh, and uh, we use uh, Oracle as a database, as a database. <coughs> when it comes to mainframe, when it comes to the mainframe, right? So here we use CICS uh, macros okay assembler code assembler map macros we use assembler macros we use to create the screens okay so to implement that we use kix assembler code to write and we use cobol or pl1 pl bar 1 or pl1 so not only cacs team uh, you know old system has ims dc are TM okay so this is also uh, you know front end uh, environment only front end uh, component only in mainframe but this is a, one uh, you know oldest front end component in mainframe technology but last 20 years 30 years they are using kicks as a front end so when it comes to the database in mainframe we use uh, you know database as VSAM file, you can use VSAM to store the data or we can use DB2 or IMS DB. So as per the client choice, they can look, they can use VSAM as a st to store the data or DB2 to store the data or IMS DB. Either one of them we can use to store the end users data, to use end users data. Okay, so this is just a comparison. Okay, how you can compare mainframe components with the Java. I can compare in even with the .NET also, but I guess it may not be required. So everybody may not be knowing everything. Let's go with the stick with the mainframe. Okay, so next. So uh, in you know in mainframe there are two applications. Okay, one is batch applications and the other one is online application so i am telling you how the system works okay and i know there are some people who has 10 years experience who has 8 years experience 6 years 4 years i request i will give you some space nothing but time to add your inputs in this context okay so when it comes to the kicks you may not able to add but in few scenarios, you will be able to add your inputs. I, I'll be more happy if you give, you know, if you add some points on top of my, uh, you know, presentation. Right. So 
in mainframe, uh, there are two types of applications. Who are new to mainframe, you can, this is very important for you. <clears throat> so there are two types of applications. One is a batch application. The other one is online application. So nothing but batch application is nothing but batch programs. So to write the batch program, to work on batch project, so you should know very well JCL, you should know very well COBOL, RDB2 and COBOL, okay, or IMS TV. So where I say TV database and COBOL. So there is no need of, there is no need of uh, knowing IMS, DC or kicks. It is not required. Okay, so this is the, you know, these are all the modules, skill sets we use to develop, to work on batch applications. When it comes to online application, when it comes to online application, so we have, okay, VZAM, TV2, or IMS TV. By the way, instead of COBOL, there can be a PL1 also, okay. So IMS DB, DB, uh, DB are, these are all database, COBOL or PL1. So JCL is not required to run here. J, JCL is the one which is going to, uh, which is going to help us to run the programs. When it comes to the online, we use only JCL to just to, to compile, to convert from high level language to load module and all the stuff. But when it comes to this JCL, here it, we use to convert into load module from uh, high level code at the same time at the same time to run the program. But is it the case for online? No, we don't use JCL for execution. To run the online application programs, we don't use JCL. Yes, we should have knowledge on JCL. There is no doubt about it, but execution is not required. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, what type of the examples, you know, what type of the projects for batch application? Now, for this, I want here from others. Now, so I don't want to point out by name, by name. So please, okay, you think everyone here to, you know, everyone joined here to learn. Okay, don't think that if I say something wrong, I may not explain properly. Don't think all of them, whatever it is here whatever it is there in your mind, you present it because after 15 days, they are not going to stay with you here, right? Yeah. So, you know, who are having good experience, okay, who are having experience on mainframe, give me the answer. What are the projects will come under batch application? Give me two, three batch examples. Anyone, anyone can give, no problem. Credit card applications, okay. which we can Sorry? Uh, update the uh, Credit card applications. Okay, nice, superb. Uh, let's say I'm a layman. Okay, I did, I know I what what does it mean? Okay, very good, nice. Can you please elaborate? Why I am asking this? Because there are some new people also there. Sure. Credit, credit card, bank credit card. Hmm. What does so it mean? What? Yeah, what does mean in the credit card application in the sense what we do, how this batch application is linked with this credit card. <clears throat> Give me a little bit more uh, description about that programs or how there are two, three like generating a statement, some such as. Tell me. Okay, suppose if we, if we are purchasing anything with the credit card, even though it is debited immediately, but if you see the bill generates monthly after uh, maybe 15 days or seven days. So batch in background, the batch will store these data and will be reflected uh, only after 50 days, which is not immediate, right? If we use UATM, that is immediate. So in case of we can expect some delay, then we can uh, use the batch applications. Right, okay. Or we can yeah. have uh, night batches like that. So which is not immediate. Immediately, we don't uh, get any updates. So in case we can go for batch. Yes, thanks, thanks, Sai Kartike for involving and sharing your in knowledge. Next, someone. Uh, we yeah, can Puri. take the life insurance uh, domain. So in life insurance, 
like normally when you uh, give a policy like if you are uh, adding premium to the policy you will pay on that day but the premium payment getting updated in the system will be happening on the night batch cycles only hmm. not only the premium payments even the other uh, op operations that you do to your policy like if you are withdrawing something uh, your partial of the premium or it is going to lapse whatever state changes it is going to happen it will happen in the batch cycle during the batch cycle process only the policy will get updated okay nice next <clears throat> very good uh, in telecom okay. also we can use it like uh, to generate the monthly quarterly or yearly bills oh uh, yeah i understood okay you are saying that to generate the bill how it works how the data comes to you <clears throat> how data comes to you and what is the out output that i am expecting based on the usage of the customer like uh, whatever they are uh, using the um, like uh, the services so based on that they will uh, like uh, i mean they will create the bill and uh, on the monthly basis they will generate it right okay telecom monthly uh, monthly or quarter or half year our year bill generation nice next whereas insurance premium updates okay overnight or uh, or okay week time to update your yeah, next next so can i give one example from my end okay uh this is very 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 close to everyone okay aadhar card i don't know whether it is right or not either I mean i don't say that aadhar application is on main time because i am not sure okay without knowing that i cannot give commit but the behavior of batch application let's say you went to the aadhar card center okay hey jam and others there are two people who are attending from other countries may i don't know you will understand this example please if you don't understand ignore it sorry yeah so uh, we have a other card center right when you you went to other card center you ask to update your address then they will say that sir it doesn't affect or immediately it is not going to impact it is not going to affect so check after 24 hours which means that there is a some time frame to you know Uh, like that you updated the other customer updated like that lakhs of the people thousands of the people are updating addresses so all those things will store somewhere whatever you did in the entire day at one time at the end of the day or at 4 pm daily or 12 pm at a particular time one program will execute it will read all the records okay it will read all the records so for which other numbers needs to be updated so it will read all other numbers it will go to the actual actual uh, uh, file and it will update the address okay this is a one i can say you know this this term you would have heard sir it you know it is not going to affect immediately please check after two hours check after one hour after check half an hour you know half day it takes one one day to update so these are all the scenarios yeah anything anyone wants to add so i can i can you know one or two more you can you guys can add okay so let uh, me yeah venkat one of the uh, example it is somewhat related to the credit card application somewhat similar to the credit card one uh the example is banking uh, where um, if you see the in, uh, issuer and acquirer uh, setup right uh, when uh, network is also involved the merchant will be paid and then the settlement or risk conciliation file will be created after the once the batch runs uh, the comparison will be done what the issuer settlement what acquirer has got so that way the comparison will be done so all those settlements will be done uh in the back yeah. process okay let me add okay i might be altering or i might be adding something else on top of this 
so you know uh, i don't know whether your friends relatives have their do you have the you know any uh, shop or any mission okay credit card debit card mission will be there nowadays all gpay google pay or paytm you know things are there if you go to any shop there is a mission to swipe your uh, you know card it can be a debit or credit card so what happens you know once you debit let's say there, there is a debit card so you purchase something this you know you swipe the card the payment is done so the amount is deducted from your pocket in our bank from your bank bank okay so the amount is deducted from your bank immediately without any you know fraction of seconds but whatever the amount is deducted from your bank it is not going to settle going to transfer immediately to that particular merchant or the seller okay so for whatever they do in the entire day that will be added the next day the entire amount will be settled will be credited to their account the seller account the next day or two days still that is going on you know because one of my friend used to run dry fruit shop okay used to tell me that so you know if you do transactions first of all they will deduct 2.5 tax the banks for their transaction and top of that they will settle on the next day correct me if i am wrong sadhana i hope i added this is i hope this is a good example for your experience yes point, yes right? yes venkatya yeah. you have elaborated that uh, yeah yeah anyone wants to add anything good to share okay yeah and i am very happy you know if you keep give, give more information i will give more knowledge to you no doubt it's a two ways right so let's see i'll you know uh, the reason why i'm explaining everyone is not new to I mena mean, i mean everyone is not expert or working on mainframe in this batch so there are some people who are new to mainframe for them i'm explaining this one so okay now how batch application works i'll tell you okay so you are the end user okay you are the end user so now in the in the shop you do some transaction in the shop you do some transaction that is going to store in a database okay the data is going to through some uh, you know so you take this as a technology okay so this is a shop okay you are the customer you are doing some transaction in the shop so for that there is a some mechanism there are some programs so right or you are doing a atm transaction or credit card we will take a example of credit card you are purchasing something you are purchasing something uh through amazon or flipkart or some e-commerce website so what happens so the data is going to come to the application program it will do necessary validations it will do the minimal validations as per the logic and it will be stored in the database so the data database can be okay the database can be ims db or pl1 it can be anything so in the whole process okay or in this one there is no mainframe i can say even there is no mainframe at all i can say i can say that e commerce is developed in e commerce is developed in java html css they used all java technology so front end the e commerce website is there on java application so whatever the date whatever the transaction you do okay whatever the transactions you do like credit card basically we'll try to see your customer profile and payment details they are storing those two details in the mainframe system rest of them they are storing in the different technology there is a possibility you cannot say that 
okay entire e-commerce website data can be stored only one technology in mean one database do i am correct guys correct me say yes or no yes ma'am so in your experience is one e-commerce website can store data in a two databases or not is it possible or is it happening or not give me the confirmations your experience confirmation in the sense your experience yes yes sir right so now some data will be coming storing in their uh, java technology database that is oracle some of them data some few data is very crucial and security point of also very critical for that particular uh, website or business so what they do from front end from this you consider as a front end technology a java application you take as a java application you take a java application so the data might come directly from java to mainframe okay so i'll take this as a mainframe so that you know it might be coming directly from java system java application it coming from java system to mainframe now how data is coming from java technology or other technology it is not needed only java i am taking java as a technology because it, most of them knows it can be a .net or it can be sap some other system okay some other system so we are getting the data from java as an example to mainframe to a mainframe how the data is transferring from one technology to another technology that is nothing but one system to another system so we have something called middleware okay we have something called middleware so middleware technologies example i know english i know hindi i know my local native language i am going to china chinese person knows only chinese they doesn't know assume that they doesn't know english so we need a translator who can translate my conversion because I, i went to chennai china to product to purchase some product okay so now in this whole process how the business going to run right how the business is going to happen so chinese person is to sell the product i need to purchase it so for both of them it is important what happens now there is a language interpreter there is a language interpreter so who translate our conversations okay my conversation and the chinese person seller conversation will be translated so an understandable way same way java needs to talk to mainframe to do that there is a middleware components okay mq middleware mq okay mq series mq one is a middleware mq web spare mq we call as a web web spare web spare mq this is the middleware tool nowadays web spare mq middleware tools the role is changed uh, i can say 8 years back okay middleware tools has more demand if you know middleware tools you are a hard kick in your resume is a hard kick but now apis came into the picture okay some people may not be knowing this much depth please ignore it okay so if because i know here all type of participants are there experience is precious and all so if you don't understand please ignore some of them it is not as necessary it is not needed 100% but this is just information yeah so uh, coming to the context from java to mainframe right i am moving the data from java to mainframe so when this is happening team we use web spare mq this is a middleware tool as i said this is almost outdated now people are not using so we have something called kix web services so we have something called kix web services okay so this only kix web services they use soap api soap api 
REST API. So I want to add something here. I want to come out of this context one, two minutes. Everyone, okay, everyone, please learn SOAP API, REST APIs. Everyone, in Udemy, there is a courses. YouTube, there are some videos. Please start learning about APIs. This is going to be, you know, when your managers, your colleagues, when your experience is increasing, they might be talking about APIs. Okay. So it will be, you know, even artificial intelligence. Okay. Gen AI. In, in everywhere, the APIs are going to play key role. Okay. So ensure that. Okay. Ensure that you should have knowledge. You no need programming exp you know, hands on experience not required at least terminology how it works you should know it okay with my experience i am talking okay because even if i am learning other technologies somewhere the apis are coming even i am planning to learn gen ai there again apis are coming okay we need to create a api chatbot okay you know chatbot right so where in a website bottom right side down we have a chatbot where help support something will be there those are all you know the data exchange is happening what you request that data is going to pass to the system through apis okay hence apis are going to play key role at least one decade as per my experience my knowledge okay correct me if i am wrong okay always you are always you can correct me if i am wrong in any any situation so Okay, now when it comes to the mainframe, right? So we use Kix Web Services or SOAP API. So Kix Web Services, nothing but SOAP API, REST APIs. We use them to pass the data from Java to other. Same case, same case with other technology. I'll take a one more example for better understanding. Now make my trip. Make my trip is what? It is, they doesn't have any flights. They doesn't have their own uh, hotels it is a just a platform where you can see different hotels different location based to hotels different uh, flights lot of details you see but they don't have their own own properties right then when you are looking for a flight from delhi to uh, california delhi to melbourne some city now what happens what happens now so that particular data whatever you given that data will go to different websites indigo spyjet uh, emirates okay so in each country they have their own so it will go to all tied up basically in the make my trip with whom they tied, associated so it is going to pass okay this guy is requesting from delhi to california on this date number of passengers so these four details will be passed to the other indigo indigo is developed on dotnet assume that our uh, the make my trip developed on java so the data is going to pass these four fields data is going to pass it to dotnet or some other system so they will pull the you know once you pass it to there it will pull again may you know indigo website the from that application it will pull the data this many plates are there from indigo you can show this rows, these flights, these details to the end user. So it will pass it back to the end user and to make my trip, make my make my trip like that. It will collect from a SpyJet. It will collect, you know, collect from Air India like that. Make my trip will send same request to multiple airline companies. So each airline companies will give the data it will send back to make my trip so whatever make my trip is collected the entire data is going to show to you on the screen in a beautiful rose so i hope you are clear comfortable till now is it boring and i hope i feel it is interesting if i am not wrong at least for all the participants i mean i i guess you know who are in mainframe we don't know this entire background how it works uh, as per my knowledge because mainframe though we have a black and white screen we will get somehow we will get the data we will process it so we are in different world as simple as you know 
as per my experience we are in different world when you ask some other than mainframe so you know what is happening outside we are not aware but in the back end this is something is happening okay because we don't deal uh, you know connecting to multiple uh, you know uh, systems and all only the people who are dealing with the java dot net those people will have a, an idea okay so don't think that you know i am expert on all of them so just i have a knowledge which i gained from multiple conversations from my colleagues friends that i am sharing with you yeah so uh, right so i'll come to the content now so what happens team here the data is coming from java to mainframe very good now the data is in mainframe okay let's take a, a transactions okay credit card transactions now all credit card transactions here now from here from here the batch application starts from here the batch application starts what does it mean now the data somehow we got into the mainframe from somewhere else okay from somewhere else now that we need to process so here in the batch application in the batch application i will write a cobol db2 program so i'll write a programs i'll write a cobol or pl1 programs to read the atm you know credit card transactions to write the credit card transactions and generate the pay slips or no not state pay slips credit card statements or something else or reports or reports as per the client requirement so then this data once you generate the report you should send it to somewhere else okay somewhere else now you are generating a reports in a, a one report in one file so now this reports we will send it you know this is the one we write so here is the batch application so your role is as a developer you are the your role is here okay now you should know as per the client requirement how to read the data as per the client requirement how you generate the report as per the client requirement how you submit the code compilation and all this is the role of batch application developer okay so now batch application developer doesn't worry about how the data is coming now so this data again it should send it to the end user as a statement right so this is going to send it to somewhere else where the statement can be send it to different users because i am the credit card uh, user you are the credit card user so everyone will get an email for that there is another mechanism okay for that there is another mechanism so in this mechanism what happens we don't we don't care about it so as a batch, batch application is it the pay slip is it the statement is generating as per the report or as expected as uh, as the i mean the right format or not that format is going to send it here then that applic another application will take care of it okay so in the whole process there are two places data is storing i'll give the numbers you tell me the numbers okay i'll give the numbers you tell me one i don't know just numbers i'll give two three now which are databases in the numbers which are the databases which number is a database in the whole picture three is the database yes three is you know the statements will come to here from here it will Tra you know transfer to respect to end users okay so r is a mechanism i don't say may okay not sure how it works from here but some is a mechanism where it send the statements to someone okay so means data you are passing to somewhere so nothing but data means statements and two also okay the data is coming from a java right two so two three is somewhere your data so your come you know incoming and outgoing as simple as i want to give in another way so income is this is the income this is the outgoing this is the incoming call per mainframe this is the outgoing call per mainframe now so in this 2 and 3 in the incoming and outgoing which is 
uh, upstream and in stream or uh, downstream we have a terminology called this i hope you guys can give upstream downstream these are up, upstream and downstream give me the answer are you heard about it by the way because your silence is saying i'm scaring okay two is upstream and three is downstream yeah so please elaborate a bit more you're right the yeah, upstream is where we are getting the data from and downstream is where we are sending data to yeah these are all the two terms team which you hear you know when you are you know when you are a fresh level two three years we don't hear this much any yes you know our managers colleagues used to talk in the conversations in the team meetings and all but actually you will also talk once you get 3 4 years experience from 4 years experience onwards okay because you don't you know when you are a fresher 2 3 years you don't involve that much uh, you know implementation level you might hear but the you know issues thinking about issues concerns how it is coming where it is wrong so analyzing and all you don't deal that but after 4 years onwards you might get a chance to work or involve those things yeah so as our colleague said incoming call is nothing but upstream from where the data is coming to mainframe is called upstream from mainframe where it is going that is called downstream okay that is called downstream so this is upstream this is downstream okay so i hope you are clear any queries okay first time i am explaining batch application this much time i did not explain till now to any batch i'll say example one example i else i'll close the topic yeah go ahead i guess it seems somebody having a question yeah raja mishra you are on mute go on mute if you don't have any query nice okay next so this is all about your batch application team as simple as okay when it comes to online application when it comes to online application so atm transactions are online application okay so in online application you should know visa as i said earlier visa db2 or imsd you no need to no all these three it is not needed depends on the project okay you don't work always your life long one client right you work for different clients they use different databases so based on that you have to learn eventually one by one okay but in a single project they might use two they might use three they might use only one so there is no hard you know hard rule that you have to use it then you should know as usual cobol so minimal these are all the skills you should know basically we need to compile it but not to run so now give me the examples from your side for online application i know you did not run it if you worked on an online application then you will not be here okay so but you would have heard it you would have seen your experience share your experience please in mainframe what are the examples for online application the atm screen where uh, like you give your yeah yeah atm screens i agree next the internet banking or mob, uh, mobile banking application screens screens or do you think i don't think so because those are all not developed on kicks Though it is online application, but not developed with the Kix perspective. I believe it is IRCTC in ticket counter. If you see is black and white exactly. screen, I believe it is Kix. Hundred percent, I agree. Yes. Yeah, that is a one example I can say.
Yeah, I agree with you. Next. Yeah. So what our colleague said is that in, in IRCTC, again, uh, if you go to railway reservation counter, not the website, we are not talking about the website. If you go to the railway reservation counter, you notice next time. Okay. So just they use, you know, the employee will use max keyboard only. They don't use mouse, you know, because they, those are all, you know, our mainframe systems. Okay. Those are all our mainframe systems. I can say these are the examples for online application ATM. So I, we, you know, we are sharing these two because we have experienced it. Okay. When it comes to, you know, you know, there are, I have seen, I mean, I seen and I heard it, okay, but did not work on it. Airlines, airline companies, pure airline companies, they use mainframe CACS as a front end. Okay. So airline companies, some of the companies, I don't say that everyone is using. Don't, don't go to the website. Okay. I'm not talking about the website team. Okay. If you go to the airport. Okay. So our, you know, for everyone, the, the UI will not be the same. Okay. Uh, for employees to update your, you know, you want to do something uh, through that particular airline company. So the screen might be different when it may not be as it is web based web application. So few airline companies are also using CSS as a front end. Okay. So this is all about it. So these are the differences between uh, batch and application. When I explained what is what here. The next one. So in the entire whole process, whatever I explained, there are three layers are there. What are the three layers? Presentation layer, where you know in online application, three layers. Then business layer. There is a business layer and there is a database layer. Okay. So this is a common irrespective of the technology. So this is a common irrespective of the technology. So what is this one? This is a presentation layer. So means content. I can say kicks. Okay, screens. Kicks screens are the presentation layer where end user can see it. Then this is application layer. What is this? This is application layer where we use to develop applications programs cobol with the x programs this is cobol x programs the next database layer okay the next one is database layer so now each one should talk each other otherwise it doesn't work then it will be incomplete application so end user do something on the presentation layer it will come to application layer where it will do the validations it will connect to the respective database okay then database once you log in successfully it will say that your valid credentials to the application program then it will throw next another screen to do some other transaction so this is how your online application in the back end looks like okay So I hope you are clear till now. Any queries? Good. Yeah. So now I can say that we are done with the introduction to CACS. Okay. So you understood, I hope in this entire 40 to 50 minutes time, you would have understood, uh, you know, what is CACS. Okay. The role of CACS. Now, so I want to understand. Okay. Why CACS is more demanding now? Okay. If you see job profiles, I know why I'm telling, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you my experience. Okay. I have around 14 years experience. Okay. When I started my career, right? Okay. 
when I started my career, when I apply for the job, most of the openings were only most of the openings. I don't say that hundred percent. They look for support role. Okay, and in fact, okay, so most of them, you know, if, if you ask eight years, nine years experienced person, they say that I worked in the support project. So I'll say support projects. Okay, so then eventually it changed to maintenance projects. Now the more openings on the development projects. Okay, when I compare. Uh, you know when I, I told you right and I started to support projects are there and development openings are also there but if there are six development openings are there four support openings will be there I mean the four openings on the support uh, role so that much weightage is there for support but I don't know in now in the things how it got changed everything maybe uh, everything is streamlined and the people are not moving, uh, the projects are not moving from one company to another company. So that I'm not sure the reason, but now you see very, very, very less openings on the mainframe support. You might be seeing most of the openings on mainframe development. I'll try to share why that is happening also. Okay. And you guys also can, you can agree and say yes or no to give more boost for my statements. Okay, so uh, now the mainframe development projects are more. Okay, the reason might be migrating from other technology to analyze stuff or some other reasons. Okay, so but we are not, you know, when there is a development is more, it doesn't mean that we are getting more, more uh, develop new projects. I don't say that, okay, because we are not getting new development projects altogether. It is a brand new projects are not coming into mainframe. Yes, it might be coming here and there, but not, you know, huge that I can say. Yeah, you, you want to add anything? Guys, add people who are in mainframe are actually retiring. So that's uh, that, that, more that, that's <laughs> not in India. We are all, you know, 95 <laughs> participants are from India. Sorry, not 95. Uh, more than six parties from US in who are attending from here. Uh, 80 participants from in 80 percentage of the participants from India. So this statement is not applicable at all in India. Okay. <laughs> so it is applicable in US. I, I'll say that in US, there are so many mainframe openings are there. The reason, one of the main reason is people are retiring and colleges are not giving a training. So like, it's not like in India, right? I guess you are aware in India, we don't get when I mean, our college life is just, it's like that. Okay. If you want to get a job at any cost, we have to learn some technology after our engineering. Then we do get start. But in US, as per my, I did not visit, frankly speaking. But when I used to interact with the, you know, uh, relatives or the, you know, participants, they used to say that. So one, whatever the technology they are learning, whatever, not technology, whatever the subject they are learning in their college, on that only, they are going to get the job. Okay, like us, institutes are there, but only it is huge cost involved. Individual, uh, you know, citizen cannot spend that much amount. So what happens over there? Since the college, colleges, all colleges are dropped, giving training on mainframe. So new learners are not coming over there. So that gap is filling by Indians. Okay, so I even here also who adding some gap. They, you know, due to marriage or maternity leave, they had a gap, but they want to utilize that why, I mean, that, you know, demand. Yeah, other, other reasons.
one more reason could be like more and more companies are adopting the agile model or a scrum model so in a traditional model a developer or one person used to do everything support development and maintenance now it is being split like one team does only support another team does only development so in that case the support team stays and they are hiring new people for the development projects so that's what uh, I not 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 maybe i agree okay i agree with you i don't say because without knowing that i don't say that yeah that is might be the one of the reason but uh you know in main way we don't have that much agile mechanism like java you know all other technology they adapted agile mechanism very quickly and doing implementing it but i don't think it is okay so main i don't think and might be uh Oh uh, yeah, Venkat, and also might be because of modernization and also the migration project where the mainframe data is now migrated to the new platforms. Maybe that is the reason where uh, developers are required to do that. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. So I'll let me finish. Give a, yeah. Anyone wants to add anything? I'll give a conclusion that later. Emily, Jim, you can add your experience. hello yeah go ahead jim you had your experience yeah i'm currently working as a, a mainframe in a operation so <laughs> hello hello yeah i can hear you go ahead jim jim i can hear you but i guess you are muting and muting uh I'm currently not feeling well today. That's why. Ah, okay. So I guess first time I'm hearing your voice from day one till now. I did not hear your voice. First time I'm hearing. Very happy for that. Yeah, before After three I months. In, <laughs> because I was in uh, in work. That's why uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, yeah, yeah. I'm very silent. On, but I'm I'm listening and I'm learning. So. Yeah, he's the only one person from other country. You are from which place? Which country? Uh, I'm currently in uh, in uh, Middle East. Sorry. Mi Middle East. Middle East. Uh, country name, please. Uh, Qatar, Qatar. Qatar. Okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, team. Yeah. So as Sadhana said, right? I mean, I am sharing my experience. It may not be the industry expert. Don't consider it. I'm, whatever I'm saying, I'm not CEO of any company or industry. Just one, you know, small knowledge. So yes, as Sadhana said, I also agree with her. Like uh, now, the projects, you know, mainframe projects, they're keeping in the uh, DevOps concept. They are migrating to DevOps, and they are migrating to other technologies. In the whole process, only developers can understand their programs because in order to convert from this mainframe technology, other technology, first. We should understand what is there in a system now, how many tables are there, how many programs, and how many programs are there, how what it does. So to analyze all of them only can be done by the developers, not by the support, right? Support people knows only JCL, mainframe JCL. That's all, that's all okay. I don't think they they are I don't I don't think they have a good experience on COBOL until you know until unless if they learn personally. Okay. So that is, I am, I also feel that that is one of the reason, okay, where they want to, you know, work on existing programs and analyze and give some reports and while migrating from this technology, another technology, if something is missing, something is not transferred properly, then where is missing till which part it is copied, which part is not copied only. This technical guys can do it, but I don't say it is 100% all the projects. Yeah, there are some new uh, projects might be coming where you have to develop new sort of applications or you need to do modifications, right? You maintenance project. In that case, yes, it is might be uh, the resources might be required. So, shall we ask Chat GPT? So, let me ask one question, Chat GPT. 
why CACS is important main frame openings or we can write in a different way let's try oh my god I should rephrase sentence then only I'll get it okay you guys can repress and try chat GPT what they say what it says okay if I repress then I might get the appropriate one okay team so uh, we are done don't worry we are done only theory today and don't think that Venkat is going to do time pass with the theory stuff no that is not the case with Venkat okay so we start doing hands on from tomorrow we are done theoretical part so nothing is left in theory only I have to start theory related to practical stuff like what is the macro what is the map what is the field the terminology once I introduce all the terminologies we are good to start hands-on uh, yeah that's all for today from my end